go ahead, Ethan. What are your thoughts on you? Yeah, I'd say eight to 12 grand per unit. We, you know, we agree, we're doing one now that the bid is 7,200. So um, seven to 12 grand, 12 grand has been the most expensive. Uh, five to six have been the cheapest, but how many are they? Small. <laughs> um, they're probably like five to 700 square feet. Yeah, they're pretty small. Did you, and I don't know if you saw the video he put up about the, I think it's the world's smallest bathroom, <laughs> uh, one of the units. I saw that. Yeah. yeah. If you haven't seen that, you need to. That yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to Google that one. That was uh, that was wild when we walked through it. Not to see that. If anything, this building is going to make me social media like well known on social uh, media. Like, yeah. Even if it doesn't, if it fails financially, I'll have. Stories. <laughs> well, that's a story, Carson. And you said that like a lot of the units. They don't have like a farming kind of like floor plan to each other. So how do you approach that getting finished? Uh, we just walk walk each unit. Um, we walk walk each one and specifically say here's what we want to do, and then they'll give us a quote for that specific unit. Um, yeah, it's each unit's fun. <laughs> yeah, because I feel like that would require a lot more time and money since it's not each one is the same, and you kind of have to be there to like kind of. Hold their hands, so to speak, and be like, "Here, this is what I want on this one." Yeah, this one. So. It, it is a little more time intensive, but a lot of the little stuff I trust the contractor. So, like door handles, light fixtures, you know, light switches, uh, the type of knob on the cabinets, the type of faucets. Like, I, I, I kind of let them pick a lot of that stuff, um, just, just for time's sake. You know, yeah. A little more time consuming for the for the contractor, I think, too, because yeah. it's a little more time to put the bid together versus if they're all cookie well, cutter. Be a unique one, so. Yeah. Okay. yeah. But you're not buying 100 Yeah. Yeah. What the existing kind of, what have you done for them to keep them happy, keep them a little bit safer? Right. I know you put the safety through the door, yeah. but like, when we are. Um, I mean, are they happy to see what's going on? Some of them are happy. Some of them, I, I, I've kind of come to the conclusion that some people just complain no matter what you do. Uh, so like a good example is we put brand new flooring in the hallways. It used to be carpet and the carpet smelled like cigarette smokes. Uh, so I, I would go home from visiting the property and I would smell like smoke. Um, so we replaced that with brand new flooring and I, when I'm on site, I always ask everyone I see, like, what do you think of the improvements? Like, what do you, what do you like? What do you not like? And uh, someone said, the floor is too slippery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. So I was just like, come on, like, this is brand new flooring and you're complaining. So some people just complain, but uh, some people do really like it. They're like, oh, it looks really good. We, we really like having the security doors. Um, some people say the security doors are annoying because they have to type in the code every time. Um, but I think overall, the people that are still there are happy to see the changes. Like they, the building is much safer now. The building looks much better on the inside. Uh, you know, it, it's much better insulated now. Um, like literally, the, there used to be a door and above the door was a two foot gap and it was just nothing. So like if it was 30 degrees outside, it was all of that air was getting in. Um, so we we uh, replaced the doors. And so it's the temperature is much better in the building. But most people are happy, but there's definitely people that, you know, they, they see me and I'm, I've done really bad at telling people I'm the owner. I Everyone says you'd say the manager and I don't know, I just tell them I'm the owner. And some people see I'm the owner and, you know, they, they just want to complain. Um, so some people are unhappy, but we have not increased rents. I think people like that a lot, uh, but we've made a ton of changes. So they are overall happy. And then there's a lot of people have left. Like but a lot of people cuss me out and say, oh, I'm, I'm leaving. And I just go, okay, when are you leaving? <laughs> um, so, Can we help you pack? Can yeah, pack? seriously. Yeah. I, I think that the people that are really unhappy have left and the people that are there are grateful, I would say. Yeah. What about the bed bugs? Oh, 
Uh, I mean, we just pay a lot of money to get it treated. Um, With the people, so even uh, assuming including the units that are yeah. occupied. Yeah, so that's a whole process because they have to prep the unit, they have to clean up, they have to pick stuff up, and it takes three treatments, so they have to do that three times. And coordinating that with the tenant, and this, I, I always hate saying this, but like this type of tenant is really difficult. Mm -hmm. and, and a good example is like, there's a handful of tenants that don't have cell phones or computers. So the only way to get in touch with them is knock on the door. Um, so trying to coordinate treatment of bed bugs when you can't even call them is very difficult. So that's been a, a ongoing issue. We don't, there was originally it was four units of bed bugs. Now there's only one. And that one unit, we're very skeptical that there actually is bed bugs. We think she's just kind of crazy. Um, so like words, I, the last conversation I had with her, I was like, take it like catch the bed bug, take a picture and send it to us. Like that's, I think that's a fair uh, thing to ask because we are paying for the treatment of the bed bugs. So we've tried to coordinate it with her and it's impossible to schedule with her. So I kind of just said like, you know, when was the last time you saw them? And she said, oh, it's been a few months. And I was like, so you haven't seen any for months? And she's like, no. But then a week later, she'll call and say, hey, I want it treated. Uh, so I was like, you know, just catch it, take a picture, send it to us. Let's verify that there's bed bugs. So there, we may be rid of the issue, but most likely not. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, would you consider automating the thermostats and things like that eventually so that you have control over them remotely? Yeah, I, uh, we will do that. We, we won't do uh, where we have remote control because that wouldn't mean we have to install Wi-Fi. So that, that was the original plan. But then we realized we just install Wi-Fi into the building and that's another $50 a month or whatever that Wi-Fi would be. So what we'll just do is just put like a quality thermostat that just stays at 70. So, you know, when it goes up, it'll turn the AC on, when it goes down, turn the heat on, and then just bolt that thing down. <laughs> It's possible. I think it would be a headache to get these tenants to agree to five dollars additional rent. Um, but having Wi Fi, so much people could work from home. And oh, they could use the Wi Fi. That's right. Interesting. I didn't think of that. They, they could have jobs where they just leave, and if they're not mobile or any day outdoor, you could. Have people that are on a low income yeah. get a job that they can't afford. Otherwise, they can't get transportation or it's not available there. That's a really good thought. Yeah, I was assuming you're saying Wi Fi just for the thermostat. But yeah. if we did it to where it was high speed enough where everybody could use it, yeah. $5, that's a really good idea. Thank you. <laughs> you're giving me all kinds of nuggets here. I have to look at things to be able to get people, such as autistic people who want to live on their own. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things that I've learned is some of them go to school using the high speed Wi Wi Fi. Um, they're not sociable, but they they get jobs. But they can, they're very smart, so they can do computer programs if they have Wi Fi at home. Yeah, yeah, it's like a, it's almost like a dorm type, type situation. I like that a lot. I'm gonna I'm gonna propose that. You mean why are the hot spots why? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. That's uh, that's a good thought. I don't think Mary charges much for it. Yeah. 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 Of that $5, I think she'll just take like half of it. Yeah, yeah. Mary's easy, right? Oh, not too easy. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is great stuff. Um, I know you'd mentioned you maybe want to talk a few minutes about. Mm. Yeah, the one thing is that, yeah, I mean that that's so yeah, that's okay with me anyway. So. Cool. Um, yeah. So the I we, we kind of buy real estate on the side. My my full time business is uh, I'm a hard money lender. So we we raise capital from investor and we lend it to people who flip houses. Um, so in addition to houses, we lend to people who buy multifamily too. So we can do bridge bridge debt for multifamily. Um, so. Uh, I, I don't have a huge spiel on that, but if, if you're interested either as an investor, because we have a debt fund where we raise money from, from investors, if you're interested either as an investor or as a lender, or you're looking to uh, borrow, uh, I've got uh, cards with our loan terms. So, um, and they've got a link to our website. So, um, 
I can. So in other words, if somebody has, you know, money burning their hole yeah. in their pocket and they want to put it to use, then you can. That's right. Can, we can help them make money. You can help them lend it. And yeah. Matt's going to ask you a question on insurance. Can yeah, they, I work. They, we work. I work with a lot of uh, yeah people doing flips. I do insurance. Okay, cool. But sometimes the hard money falls through. Yeah, they need something real quick to get the job there. Yep. Uh, so what are your terms or what do you guys, how much time do you guys need to, to get a deal done? Because yeah. I see like stuff fall through, right? When the day before, two days before, we're all of a sudden, it, you know. Yeah. So we, we can move very quickly. Um, we're really, we really only lend in middle Tennessee. So it gives us an advantage. Our whole team's here. This is the market we know. So like we've done deals the next day okay. um, we don't we prefer to have five to seven days sure. yeah um, but we can move that quickly okay. and then our, our terms are we'll lend up to 100 percent of purchase price uh we're typically lend at 12 percent interest in two to three points so we're like we're not the cheapest in town we're not the most expensive like right in the middle um do you but, try to move also or just yeah the, okay yeah, yeah nashville go ahead yeah. yeah okay yeah all, all middle tennessee chattanooga clarksville murfreesboro we, we love those markets. Cool. I thought I thought Matt was going to say, yeah, I'm the insurance guy. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we've done a lot of improvements to make it insurable, but when we bought it, I wouldn't want to insure it. <laughs> yeah, so other questions on on uh, on what they're doing with that heavy lift? No. So, but I guess like, what's the long term plan? Are you to make it as like a long term investment, or are you only want to do a certain amount of renovations and then try and sell? So I, I it's a cash flow play. Um, it's not an appreciation play. I think just the limitations of the building aren't going to make it ever super desirable. Um, but it does. We bought at such a low purchase price that it it should produce significant cash flow. So the long term play is. Get it to where it's less of a headache and it's uh, cash flowing, and just hold on to it uh, for, you know, forever. That's that's kind of the play. So Paris goes from ten thousand to like hundred thousand. We might sell it at that point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's pretty amazing. So you've got thirty-two per unit plus average twelve. Yeah. Know, renovation, your cash flow is going to be insane. Yeah. It it um it should produce quite pretty strong cash flow. We're, I mean, we're hoping we can get the rent, the monthly income to like twenty grand a month um, on an asset that we paid in total one point one million, um, including all the capex. That, that this should be pretty solid. You said laundry room, so that's additional income. Um, yeah, we we might just lease the unit, so we may not get income from the laundry room. Mm -hmm. Um. But maybe at some point we'll buy our own units. Yeah. But I, I thought this would be a, a good topic to cover and yeah. talk about, you know, because, you know, a lot of people, they hear value add and they're like, oh, okay, yeah, great. That's what, so, yeah, what, is, what does that really mean, right? So yeah. let's talk about, you know, so I just felt like this would be a good topic for yeah. a lot of people to, to hear what, you know, actually goes into it and, I'm glad you handle stress very well because I'm sure not everybody else, you know, does per se. But yeah, uh, <clears throat> yeah so like the equivalent of working at a startup when you yeah, yeah. begin and you get your hands on everything, you learn so much more. Yes. The great great. Yeah. I, I saw a quote today actually that said if, if you want to learn quickly, talk to other people. If you want to learn deeply, do it yourself. Um, and that's been very true a lot of the time. I, yeah. So now, if if any of you out there, by bringing a deal and I say this has got like get the double fur coat coat on you on it, you wait, know. Wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. You know what that means. Brandon turned it on. Run away. Yeah. You know what that means now. You know. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. But there's a lot because I have I have done a lot of really bad houses, but I've never done. When it's, uh, when it, but I look at them and I think it's so awesome to see it yeah. renovated and, and you know with windows in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I do kind of think of it now as a construction project than a renovation. I mean, I, it, that's kind of shifted in my mind. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. It does complicate things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so I can talk about yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but we appreciate it. Um, you know, so uh, appreciate Will for coming in and, and talking about it. Um, yeah, because I got, you know, Will's right. But the first <laughs> six months, I kept going, are you still going to talk to me next time you sing me kiss? Because I know that that was going to, I had a feeling what it was going to be like, uh, you know, from, from that standpoint. But, uh, you know, just somebody that's dealt with a heavy, heavy lift on a, on a property. So, yep. so <clears throat> totally appreciate that. Um, just let everybody know <clears throat> next month, um, next month, uh, I talked to Brandon about coming in and talking about, and the topic's going to be, okay, we're under contract, now what? Right? Because a lot of, you know, a lot of people here, okay, yeah, we're under contract, great. Well, okay, there's a lot of things that go into getting to the closing table and all that stuff too, right? So, so again, it's a, I, it's a topic that I don't think we've ever really spoken about and, you know, for, on the multifamily uh, focus group meeting. So I just felt like it would be a good one. Brandon's very excited to come in and, and talk about that because like Will said, he's, He's a very detailed guy, so mm -hmm. um, you know he'll he'll cover a lot of great items that I think maybe a lot of people don't necessarily think about, but then they understand them once they get you know going through that that process. So I think that's going to be a great topic again uh, for next month. So so we appreciate everybody coming out. I know we have about I think about five minutes left. If if you got if anybody has any questions. Uh, any more questions from that standpoint? So you just yawning back there? Okay. Well, I guess I can ask another question. Because <laughs> yeah. you said like Brandon was like, I'll only do this deal if I bring up all the work. Mm -hmm. How often is Brandon and Derek all like? Yeah. I mean, I, I he didn't phrase it like that, but <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, kind of core of it. But um, we, we have weekly meetings, so they're on all the weekly meetings. And then uh, Brandon, you know, every major decision I, I, I call him on. So he probably thinks about it for two to four hours a week. Um, but outside of that, it's not a ton. And he, I'm actually, tomorrow we're going to the property. And it'll be the first time Brandon's been to the property since we bought it in May. Um, so I, I convinced him to go down. Um, and it was specifically, it was the first time I was like, okay, there's a couple of major things I, I really need help on. Um, I, I'd love for you to come see the property, but so yeah, he, he probably works two to four hours a week on it. Yeah, and then Garrett's much less. Garrett's thirty minutes a week, but he, he, he's Garrett's the capital guy. He's the money guy, so that's fair. Any chance this property has a view of the water that gorgeous in Paris? Unfortunately, not. It, it does have a view of the old downtown square. Um, so, like from the downtown square, you can see this building. And same from the building, but no, no water view. Yeah, it is in a great location. Yeah, I do have to say that. Yeah. It's, it's would, you, would you consider a few more terms in the meantime? I I've thought about this, and if any, anyone knows Mike Terravella, he's been telling me to do it. But um, I I uh, I'm kind of a guy of focus, and I'm I'm putting all of my focus on security and safety. Once that's done, then I can think about the midterm rentals and Airbnbs and things like that. But I don't, I don't think it's in a position to be doing creative things at this point. I um, agree with you, but it seems like that's a vacation spot. Or, mm. I just know the first time I came over the hill and looked down, it's like just took my breath away. Yeah, I like Paris. It's a cool city. Yeah, people it's come in for the annual fish fryer. <laughs> that's right. Thank you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yep. So we'll probably get there, but is there any rehab going down in downtown with the storefronts and the rejuvenation process? I haven't noticed any. Um so oh, yeah, he's focused, he drives there and does his stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Rejuvenate the community and help your property as well. Yeah. It's it's a very like all the storefronts are occupied. I I don't notice any vacants or anything, but I haven't noticed any renovations. No. 
No. Okay. Yeah. Another. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I didn't choke up and pull that Mary wants to move out and become mayor. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So, well, good job. So, well, everybody give uh, Will Coleman a hand. Appreciate it. Appreciate everybody coming out. And like I say, next uh, next month we're gonna have uh, Mr. Thornberry here to talk about, you know, hey, you got this property under contract now. What? So, yeah. So, which will be a great topic to to talk about. So, yeah. All right. Well, thanks always, again, everyone. Always.